So we established uh, as to how we study a one dimensional motion, motion along an axis, which I said it could be x axis, it could be y axis, it could be z, z axis, or in any one di direction uh, beyond that. <coughs> and uh, but uh, I found myself inadequate to take up those problems uh, right at this moment and uh, I had some telephonic conversations with some of my colleagues and they said no, 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 first of all you should uh, rather strengthen uh, the understanding and uh, so I give in to their thought and one of my very learned uh, friends uh, who is now settled in USA, California and uh, he told me something <coughs> and he said uh, that uh, these lectures should be meant for the bright students and therefore you should not spoon feed them but rather give hints like the hints that were given in the great uh, solutions of the various books of SL learning <coughs> mathematics uh, for example trigonometry statics dynamics all those books that we read in uh, the class 11th and 12th in our mathematics classes statics and dynamics etc etc uh, but the learned author uh, S.L. Looney when he was uh, giving solutions to his problems which is very nice he uh, gave only hints and encouraged the students to take up the things but right now at this stage I think I must cater, I must cater to the needs of the average students and also the below average students. What is happening? Maybe uh, some more time I'm going to take. <coughs> it doesn't matter. So in that case, uh, I would have just uh, enumerated some of the things which I need right now, uh, plus some uh, augmentation uh, that is I'll just deviate from these things if the subject requires so in doing the two dimension three dimension uh, even one dimensions what we ought to know is what is the position vector then from position vector uh, X then we go to the displacement vector uh, yani X2 minus X1 Okay, then I must define and we must know what are the scalar quantities in physics and what are the vector quantities, distinguish between the two of them, what we mean by two equal vectors, what are two vectors which are unequal, then if we have uh, the difference of two equal vectors, hmm, uh, vector v minus vector v then we get a vector 0 so I'll just emphasize as to what is a 0 vector then what are the vectors which are in the same line so we call them collinear vectors then we have vectors coplanar vectors then we establish what is vector addition and subtraction and laws of addition etc and then resolution of vectors which is important and which asks me asks us to go into the nuances of uh, plane trigonometry so in the first instance 
since I have uh, given the two dimension and three dimension motion. <coughs> so, in the two dimension and three dimension motion, first of all, let me introduce to you the as I introduced before, this is a 1D motion which is simply what we take in the x direction. This is the x axis uh, plus x axis. Of course, we take the minus x axis. So, this is the reference point with respect to which we are drawing this line. Then we have uh, on this plane, on the plane of the board, and when you do so, in the plane of your notebook, we have the axis X and the axis Y. And of course, the angle between the two of them is angle theta and this theta is equal to 90 degrees as we know from our junior classes and this is also equal to pi by 2 radians. Radians is the symbol is half the circle that we use for uh, the degrees. But anyway, now we take these two axes which are perpendicular to each other. I'm using my left hand fingers, the central finger is showing the x axis and this is showing the y axis. And in the three dimensional case, suppose I have the x axis and the y axis as it is. Again having a an angle over here which is uh, 90 degrees so we call this a right angle uh, and now what is the genesis of having this 90 degrees and what it means and how uh, this 90 degrees helps us uh, that is the word which you may search and that will help you orthogonal this part gonal stands for the angle ortho means it's just like what I have here uh, orthopedics you know that the angle over here, the joint over here, the thing here, that is uh, 90 degrees and how one is, one axis is independent of another axis. <clears throat> that I will come later. But now I want you to take your, on the piece of paper that you have this, uh, this uh, 2D system where this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. Now I'd like you to draw a line which is perpendicular to both this line x and also the line y. <coughs> Naturally when I said that this is uh, in the 1D system this axis in coordinate geometry, this becomes minus x axis. So similarly here also, I can extend this and this is the minus x axis, minus x because there is an opposition, the angle between this and this becomes equal to 90 degrees plus another 90 degrees and that means the total angle between these two directions becomes 90 degrees plus 90 degrees. Of course, the two angles are 
positive angles. So, <coughs> similarly, in this direction, you can have a minus y axis, the negative axis, and again the angle between the two axes appears to be 90 degrees plus 90 degrees, 180 degrees. Okay. So 180 degrees is if I write 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. That is, there is an opposition between the two of them. One is in this sense and the other is in this sense. So the angle over here is between the two becomes equal to plus 180 degrees and which leads with lags will come to that later on. But uh, here it means that there is an element of opposition. 180 degrees. Opposition. Opposition. So, now, I asked you and you try to draw a line which is uh, 90 degrees to this axis and 90 degrees to this axis. Initially, it uh, opposes us. It uh, kind of, uh, we are not able to do it on the piece of paper that we have uh, on a piece of paper it's not possible for us to draw because we try to seek the new line which is perpendicular to both x and both and y the new line we seek to draw uh, here in uh, on the same plane but now I'll show that if like what you are doing, I have this one. I have this one as the x-axis and this one as the y-axis. Then look here. Look here. There is another line which we can draw perpendicular to both of them. What we call? We draw a normal to the plane over here like this. And this normal which is coming out of this paper is the positive z direction. <clears throat> of course, the opposite direction that I'm showing here is the negative z direction. And what we do is, therefore, we can plot the three dimensions like this. This is x, this is y, and this is how we represent this as the z axis. Okay, and the angle between the x and y here are y and z here are z and x here. These angles are all 90 degrees. You can see from here itself that between x and this z axis the angle appears to be to naked eye even it appears to be 90 degrees. So it is perpendicular to the x-axis and also you can see that this is perpendicular to the y-axis, the y-axis over here and they are said to be mutually perpendicular. Okay, the axes are mutually perpendicular to each other. And all these angles are 90 degrees, 98 degrees, 90 degrees. So what is the significance of this? 90 degrees. Now, I'll just introduce to you, just in order to explain this, I will introduce to you what is the basic uh, uh, trigonometry, plane trigonometry, and wherein we have two lines and 
from this line, top of this line, if I, the angle between the two of them is theta, the angle between the two of them is theta, then if I drop a perpendicular, if I drop a perpendicular which meets the baseline, so this is base, you may recall, base B. And the angle over here is 90 degrees, this one 90 degrees, this is the perpendicular, 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 what we also call the, uh, okay. Perpendicular, let us represent by P. And then the longest line, as you can see here, is the line which is greater than the base, the line which is greater than the perpendicular. This is called hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Very interesting spelling, uh, many syllables, but suffice to say that this is H. Okay. Now the base here, and this is of course from a system. This is the, this is the x axis and this is the y axis, etc. And in that system, we have been able to draw a right angle triangle with the perpendicular, with the base and this and that. <clears throat> you can see that if I just reduce the hypotenuse to a new value, then accordingly we can see that the length of the base or the length of the perpendicular also reduces and so is that if E is still reduce so these values is still reduce so there is an element of uh, proportionality between base and hypotenuse base I'm sorry base and perpendicular perpendicular and hypotenuse, hypotenuse and base are the inverse base and so hypotenuse, etc, etc. <coughs> so then uh, we define certain trigonometrical quantities which are nothing but ratios. Okay. So for example, allow me to introduce what is known as a simple thing. So a simple uh, definition that is sine of theta, the angle, which we write as simply as sin theta, in Hindi is interesting thing, ja, koja, kotsja, this, that, this ja, that ja, but I insist that even the Hindi or Urdu students or Turkish students or students in Arabic in Egypt uh, have some, <coughs> they should stick to this. If you, we can go for the SI system, if we can go for the number system, uh, then we should adopt to the sine theta, cosine theta, tan theta, etc. <coughs> Now this is equal to perpendicular upon hypotenuse. This is how we define it. So that means now for a given theta, this is a relation sine theta is perpendicular upon hypotenuse. So perpendicular upon hypotenuse. If uh, 
naturally. Then we have another thing, cosine theta. Cosine theta, which we write as cos theta, cos theta, and which is base upon hypotenuse. With the help of this sine theta, I'll just say that we can define cosec theta. Okay, cosec theta is the inverse of sine theta, which means it is equal to the hypotenuse divided by the perpendicular. And similarly, a sec theta, which is the inverse of cos theta, and which is equal to hypotenuse upon base. Now, these values, you can see there is an interesting feature about it. The perpendicular or the base, they are smaller than the hypotenuse. So, what is the maximum possible value of sine theta? The maximum possible value of sine theta is 1. The maximum possible value of cosine theta is 1. <coughs> so, then we can go for the ratio and that is the perpendicular upon base and we define it as tan theta tan theta which is equal to perpendicular upon base which if I divide this quantity by this quantity I will get the perpendicular upon base this is tangent theta sorry I didn't write tangent but you can add that and uh, this is equal to sine theta upon cos theta the thing which is very important to me is this particular definition cosine theta is equal to base upon hypotenuse which I want to use and when we go for the vector resolution okay then it is a very important factor <coughs> so the inverse of it 1 upon tan theta is equal to base upon perpendicular is equal to cos theta upon sine theta <coughs> so uh, these are some of the definitions and from where we derive what are the identities <coughs> in the system this right angle triangle it was proposed by uh, a Greek scientist that there exists a relation between D, P and H. And this relation is very well known to us that is the base square base square plus perpendicular square is equal to hypotenuse square. The basic simple mathematics. But I'm drawing your attention to this basic simple mathematics, uh, which is a theorem. A theorem called Pythagoras theorem. So the Pythagoras theorem pertains to this right angle triangle b square plus p square is equal to h square and if I divide this equation throughout by this equation throughout by h square I'll get a relation b upon h I'm just eating one step whole square plus p upon h whole square is equal to h upon h whole square 
I was taught initially trigonometry by a teacher uh, who later on gave up uh, mathematics to become a revenue officer. Uh, while he was uh, training for the revenue department, the income tax department, uh, I'm sorry, sales tax department, uh, he happened to be our guest uh, between my class 10th and 11th vacations and his name, I revere him, uh, Akbar Hussain Rizvi, he was related to, he was a cousin <coughs> and what he taught me and what he used to insist that genius man is that you must eat some steps to make the things quick. So in doing physics also we eat steps but not right now. We'll go and then you can see from these equations that this is what is this for the system cos square theta plus sine square theta is equal to 1. So it is a manifest of the Pythagoras theorem the base is square plus perpendicular is square is equal to h is square. Now how to write what it means? I should rather understand a student some students they say why don't you write uh, cos plus theta whole square is equal to as cos square theta square. No, 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 no. Uh, plus sine square theta square. No, 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 no. Okay, so this is the certain relationship for theta. The square of that relationship plus the square of this relationship for a certain entity called theta is equal to 1. <coughs> Similarly, if I divide by b square, so in the same relation I will get b square, b upon b whole square plus p upon b whole square is equal to is equal to h upon b whole square. So I get another identity. b upon b this is 1. p upon b this is tan theta. So this is tan theta square which I'll write as 1 plus tan theta square and h upon b this is cosine and this I said and told you this is sec and this is, I get a sec square theta. Sec square theta. So these are the identities and many others. I can write by dividing by uh, p square. I can have uh, b upon p whole square. I'm sorry, b upon p square plus p upon p square is equal to h upon p square and then this becomes b upon p the base upon the perpendicular so this is uh, base upon perpendicular, so this becomes the reverse, it's tan theta uh, reverse, 1 upon tan theta is equal to cot theta, so this is I get cot square theta plus 1 is equal to this cosec square theta. Well, I don't mean that I teach you these small tits and bits of trigonometry but I am telling you that these are certain identities which we must understand and we must practice because the practice is what is the exercise that we do and we obtain things like this 
they, they will have their meaning, I will be able to recall them hmm, when it is required. So, as I said, that in this system of 1D, I am sorry, 2D, 3D, etc., we will require as to what are the resolution of these quantities. Now, suppose I have allow me to draw again allow me to draw again a system where I have the two axes this is x this is minus x this is the zero this is y and this is minus y and now I have a hypotenuse that I draw from here like this. Okay. Allow me to drop a perpendicular here, which meets in this point. The angle over here is 90 degrees. 90 degrees right angle. This angle over here is the positive angle theta that I have taken. It could be a negative angle if I take it in the clockwise direction. So this is O. Suppose I call this line as A. Okay. And let the length of it also I can take as uh, uh, length this is proportional to some quantity which I call A. Of course, later on I will relate it to vectors and I will call it vector A. So, I have to correlate. But right now when I drop the perpendicular, hmm, so I talk about the resolved parts and why this resolved part is like this, I uh, have now there are two parts. And if you know a little bit of vector addition, then these two parts are like this. Okay. This is a resolved part along the x-axis. And I can write this as Ax and a resolved part along this axis, Ay. <coughs> so what I am concerned is, first of all, I will write Ax. What is Ax? And how to find Ax? Ax upon A. Ax upon A is equal to cos or cosine of the angle theta. So I can say that in the system of plane trigonometry, Ax is equal to A cos of theta. So for a hypotenuse, for a length A, we define our system of the right angle triangle over here. The value Ax over here, which we call the dissolved part, this is said to be equal to <coughs> uh, this cos theta. <coughs> now, if you see and then we will learn a little bit more tits and bits of trigonometry which we have to call. If I write this and this is my uh, Ay, look here. In the books that we introduce and very simply we say that Ay is equal to, Ay is equal to A sine theta. But I will try to understand the things in terms of a cosine of theta. What is the theta now? The angle between this and this, there is this angle, which is equal to pi by 2 minus theta or 90 minus theta. And so I rather write this Ay as uh, allow me to go here, Ay 
is equal to a cos of 90 degrees or pi by 2 minus theta which in turn turns out to be a sine of theta. Later on fluently we use this as the dissolved part in the y direction and in the perpendicular direction to the x axis is a y and this is a sine of theta and a x which is a cos of theta. <coughs> but the dissolution is a cos of theta. <coughs> so with the help of what I have introduced what is required of me <coughs> and what I have done is I have introduced to you the three dimensional system x, y and z. My x is like this, my y is like this and my z is like this. So the opposite direction to z is into the board. This direction is out of the board and uh, without introducing the vector concept, suppose uh, what we have is like this and there is a vector and it is a direction like this then there is a tip of the of the arrow and this is the back of the arrow so the tip of the arrow if we look from here it's a pointed object and uh, the back of the arrow is a kind of a uh, blunt thing okay <clears throat> so this is x direction this is y direction this is z direction this is minus x this is minus y and inside getting into this plus so there are two ways of representing the z axis this is one when we have a point in circle this is out of the page out of page or out of board connotation and this is the symbol of into the page into the page into the page in fact uh, I'm not and you are not yet qualified to tackle the problems unless we understand, you understand, I make, I share with you what are the things from here to here and more before we tackle a certain problem. <clears throat> so tackling of problems and uh, one of the things because you may be doing problems right now, so I will recall for you uh, just uh, something which I read in uh, a great book of problems a great book of uh, problems in physics that was written by a great teacher from the Soviet Russia Russia of the yester years when it was not disintegrated and his name is you may ask your teacher you may ask your colleagues you may ask others so you can just google his name was Iradal and for Iradal once upon a time I used to say that that if the book of Iradal is given and a group of students and teachers from all over my city they are put together and they are asked to solve each and every problem one thing they will fail and the second thing I'll be thankful to God Almighty if they are able to solve 50 percent of the problems that they are defined there in a month's time <coughs> Eradao says for tackling problems Eradao says that it's easy to solve 50 percent of the problem in physics once you read the problem 
four or five times. Take a pen, make a sketch of what the problem says and say the problem not in the words of the uh, examiner but in your own words. Once you finish and once you understand what is being asked of, of you, then you have already solved 50% of the problem. Rest is recalling your tools and applying them in a systematic manner. If you lose the link, go back, think and restart and you can uh, solve the problem all by yourself and once that problem is solved, you are a very happy, happy, happy boy, happy, happy, happy girl. You may even like to dance, <laughs> to solve, to have solved such a beautiful problem. Okay. And, but whenever you do so, make dua for uh, Irada, who is no more. Thank you very much. We'll carry on.